Overall, the 2018-19 hunt season was, was a good season for us. If my memory and my field notes serve me, we only missed one bird last year. That was a wood duck we clipped on a hunt up in Wisconsin that somehow slipped two dogs and four hunters all looking for it. Other than that one bird, we had a 100% recovery rate last year uh, with the dogs and every retrieve that we sent them out for. Recovery rate for me, that's a measure I use to look at just how well our training in the off season was and, and it also gives me a, a data point on you know, how well the genetics are, are performing in our dogs. It, it's actual data that we can look at, so recovery rate for me is very important. So other than that one bird, you know, the dogs did extremely well. Overall, I was very happy with how they performed. Try my best to be conscious of every hunt we go on and, and study and really watch the dogs on that hunt. I do that for a couple reasons. I, I want to learn what the dogs are telling me, you know, in the situation that we're in. So I try to be conscious about that and I try to encourage my owners and dog owners out there to, to watch what your dog's doing uh, on any particular hunt you're out there because you can always learn something from them. Last season was a big swing for us in terms of action and momentum. Unfortunately, in Southeast Missouri, we just flat had a slow season. Um, those were very, very difficult hunts and there was a lot of days we went out and we didn't shoot a single bird. And what I require of our dogs, even on those hunts, is they've got to sit and they've got to remain calm, patient, steady, and respectful of the hunters. And I can't reward that good behavior uh, with a retrieve on those hunts because there's no birds to go shoot. But they, at, at the end of the day, they still have to do what's required of them. On the other hand, in our travels to Texas and Kansas last year, those were very much the opposite. Those were fantastic hunts, lots of birds, lots of action, lots of things going on. And what happened on that is that resulted in a little bit of problem with breaking with some of the dogs. They went from very, very slow days, no activity, no retrieves, to, you know, a couple weeks later, we're on these big, fast-paced, action-packed hunts and that led up to some breaking problems. So what we'll do this off season, again, I've got diesel in the dog hide. It's all zipped up just like it was on our hunt. And you can uh, just dry fire a lot, whether it be a popper, uh, popper loads out of your shotgun, starter pistol. In my case, I'm just gonna use my remote launcher, no dummies on it, just dry fire it. And we will work this into our training regimen where we just do a lot of gunfire with him in here to just teach him to be patient, that there's nothing out there to retrieve. And this will be the best cure for our breaking problem that we had last year. And uh, we'll, we'll see this pay off when we go on our next crane hunt. So here we go. He's in here, all closed up. I'm gonna dry fire here. No movement in here, which is good. That's what I'm looking for. Now what I'm gonna do is just open this up and reward my dog for being patient and calm and quiet. Good boy, good lad. And as you can see, he's just laying in there chilled out, which is, which is actually really good, that's what I want. He's calm, he's relaxed, he's not wanting to bust out of there and go pick something up. So we'll work a lot of this in, like I said, off the off season, just to have him prepared so when we go on that next crane hunt, we won't have that breaking problem again. First time experiences are, are always a special time. You know, just the anticipation of going to a new place, meeting new people, being in a part of the country maybe you've never been, those all make for great memories. So if you ask me if I had to pick one single hunt that we did last year that really sticks out to me, hands down it's gotta be the Sandhill Crane Hunt that we did with Premier Sandhills down in Texas. Not only because that was a bird that I personally never hunted, but it gave me the opportunity to work my dogs on a bird that they've never had a chance to go retrieve. And to top that off, we took two young Brookstone dogs with us on that trip last year, Patty and Quinn, and their very first live hunts were Sandhill Cranes, and to see those two young dogs pick those big birds was, was very, very special for me. Good lad! Good Quinn! 
boy. Dead. Good boy. That's my boy. Can't tell you how happy I am right now. 18 month old dog. Um, we've been working up to this point. This is his first big road trip. This is Quinn, by the way. Uh, first big road trip. His first actual hunt. And he just picked up two sandhill cranes for his, two, for his first two birds. Uh, pretty, pretty emotional moment <clears throat> for me right now. Uh, sorry, pretty emotional moment for me right now just to see one of my young dogs that I've been bringing up through our program and his first two picks are these huge sandhill cranes. Uh, unbelievable. It just, it's all the training come together. It's, it's all the hours, it's all the work, it's everything going into it to see it all come together on, on the first retrieve. So, very special moment. I'm, I'm so happy, so tickled. Good boy, Quinn. Good lad. I get asked a lot from a lot of people, and, and this is a common question I get from young people. And by the way, I just want to mention that I absolutely love that we're getting emails, uh, social media comments, and those things from the next generations coming along. I think that's very, very important, and we as parents, leaders, and role models, we really need to be encouraging the next generation uh, of gun dog owners coming along uh, to keep that up. In my opinion, having a dog and working with a dog is the best way to teach a youngster uh, responsibility, discipline, um, and having a healthy, active hobby. So uh, I just wanted, just wanted to mention that. We really appreciate those, those kinds of questions. But for me, clearly the best part of being in this business is the dogs. At the end of the day, the, the dogs are my passion. They're my stress relief. Even on the training days where it's very stressful, I can still sit at, in the house at the end of the day and it's stress relief for me. Um, so that'll, it will always be what's most important to me in this business. Beyond that, I really get a tremendous amount of joy seeing how our genetic matchups uh, train off and eventually how the careers of those pups develop. It's so interesting to see how the different matchups uh, perform, what the dogs really excel at and just their overall careers. That, that for me, is, uh, brings a lot of joy uh, to this job. And lastly, I got to toss this in, it's the tremendous relationships that we've built with the incredible owners that we've got and all the friends literally from around the world that we've had an opportunity to meet and talk to. That honestly, I would have had zero chance to ever have those opportunities if it wasn't for this kennel. It's exciting to think about what we don't see coming, that's for sure. But what we do know just from the last several years is um, we see an existing and a growing need to expand on training events. You don't have to have a Brookstone dog to come to one of these, uh, but we see a lot of benefit from the owners and the dogs coming in and spending some time learning with us. Being in an environment where you've got a large group and you're working on different things, maybe these are things that you don't get to do at home. So we're definitely looking at ways to expand and offer more opportunities for folks to come in and, and learn with us. Secondly, uh, we're excited to be thinking about and adding some additional litters to our lineup. We've got some really exceptional young dogs coming up that have everything we're looking for from a performance perspective, confirmation perspective, and we're really excited to um, get some pups out of those dogs and, and have those available for, for our owners to enjoy. We've got a young dog named Patty, in my opinion, is one of the best bred dogs in the U.S. He's international field trial champion and international field trial champion bred. I've had him since he's nine weeks old. He just turned two in January. And uh, I'm really excited to be able to offer his offspring to owners next year uh, once we get through all of his health clearances this year. Patty, Patty, Patty! Good lad. Good lad. Good boy. Come on. Good, buddy. Good lad. Oh, oh boy.